Hey everyone, welcome back. Today, we're diving right into tackling those pesky check engine lights. Stay tuned to find out what's causing them and how to fix it. Watch as we start this car. There it goes, check engine lights on. All right, let's find the OBD port under the dash here and plug this scanner in. Gonna see what's up with those dashboard lights. All right, digging into these codes, P134 and P2251, we're talking about trouble with the O2 sensor in bank one sensor one. That's the one right up front, closest to the engine. Now, P134 is telling us the ECU isn't getting any signal from that sensor. And then there's P2251, which means there's a hiccup in the circuit that manages how current flows to the sensor. Since both issues are pointing to the same sensor, chances are they're linked. We've got three main suspects here. First up, the O2 sensor itself. It might just be worn out, gummed up with exhaust, or old and on the fritz. That's your most common culprit. Next, we've got wiring issues. If the wires between the O2 sensor and the ECU are damaged or starting to corrode, that'll mess up the signal big time, leading to these communication headaches. And lastly, though it's not as common, the ECU, that's the brain behind reading the sensor, might be acting up. However, this is less likely than the first two options. We're pretty confident about what needs fixing. We're going to go ahead and swap out that O2 sensor. This should clear up those codes and get everything running smooth again. Ignoring a malfunctioning O2 sensor can lead to a domino effect of problems. Here's what you might experience. Increased fuel consumption. An inefficient air fuel mixture due to a faulty O2 sensor can lead to your car burning more gas impacting your wallet and fuel efficiency. Rough idling. The engine might struggle to maintain a smooth idle, causing vibrations and a shaky feel. Power loss. Reduced engine performance due to improper fuel mixture can manifest as a loss of power, especially when accelerating. Yeah. Emissions test failure. Strict emissions regulations might prevent your car from passing a smog test if the O2 sensor isn't functioning correctly. Before we install the new O2 sensor, let's lay it down next to the old one and make sure everything matches up. The size, fittings, and connectors. Gotta make sure we're putting in the right part to avoid any surprises later on. Okay, when we pop in the new O2 sensor, we'll start by hand tightening it first. This is key to avoid cross-threading. Once it's snug by hand, then we'll finish it off with the wrench. Just making sure everything's threaded nice and easy to keep it all smooth. And the last step. Don't forget to reconnect the battery terminal. We need to make sure everything's powered up properly before we fire up the engine and see how things are running. Once we've got everything hooked up and the engine back on, that check engine light should be off. Let's confirm everything's in the clear by running the diagnostic again. If all goes well, that means we've nailed it. Problem solved. 